In this video, we're going to look at installing SQL 2016. As of today, June 1st, uh, 2016, SQL Server has just been released. So I imagine the screen you're seeing is going to change, obviously. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the install by going to the SQL website and choosing the Try Now option. Clicking that button, right now it's really slow, will take you to the Evaluation Center. And there's a lot of people downloading it, so I'm just going to avoid clicking that button and waiting. Uh, once here, you'll be able to expand the SQL 2016 and choose the download option. It will download to your hard drive. It takes a little bit of time. That's pretty decent size. So a couple of gigs. And then you have an ISO file. Now an ISO file um, if you look, do some research, etc., you'll see that um, they tell you to go ahead and like burn it as a disk image. You don't really need to do that. It's just a fancy zip file. And if you've installed 7-zip, I recommend doing so, uh, you can just extract it. It just unzips the file. It's going pretty fast. I don't know whether to pause the video or not. I think it's almost done. Yeah, let's just wait. Okay. So that didn't take very long at all. And now in here you can find the setup file. In which case you want to highlight the setup file and run it as an administrator. The uh, installation program it looks pretty much like it always has. We're going to click on installation and click on the option to install a new SQL Server, standalone installation, or add features to an existing installation. It is the evaluation edition. Later on you can download the developer edition. Uh, SQL Server 2016 developer edition is going to be made available freely to people, uh, but at the time of this video, the first day that this is, um, SQL Server has been released, it's not yet available. So this will give us six months, approximately, uh, to wait for that, and then we can uninstall it. As it says here, the developer edition does not have an expiration date, uh, but again, it's not available uh, as of today. However, I strongly recommend using that developer edition when it is available later on this year. Okay, so next. And yes, I read through this speed, very speedily. Wow, I'm fast. Next. And use update to check for an update. Probably not necessary today. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and hit that anyway, just in case there were some last minute things. Looks good. The firewall is going to warn me saying that, you know, I won't be able to, to access the SQL Server through the firewall until that's changed, uh, but that's not an issue. And I want to uh, install the various different options here. Hmm, let me think here for a minute. What should I choose? So um, I've chosen some of these things just because of what I would like to investigate. Um, I do cover some of these in my classes, uh, but not all of them. And again, I can always come back and add some more. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose those options. Uh, at a minimum for my classes, I would recommend the database engine, of course, analysis server, reporting server, and integration server. Um, the rest, not, Client, client, client Tools Connectivities is, is uh, a nice to have feature too. But other than that, I could just come back and turn all these other on later. Okay, let me pause right there so you guys can get a look at it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven different options turned on. Nothing hiding down here. Okay, next. Oh, I also want to put this on D drive because I have 
more, much more room on D drive than I do on uh, my C drive. I'm using a solid state drive. Now I want to use this as a default instance. Um, default instance means I can just go ahead and type in localhost or the word local or just use a period. And since uh, 2016 is probably going to be my future go-to installation, I'm going to go ahead and use that. If I have older versions, like I currently have 2014 installed in this machine, I've already given them a named instance. So I can go ahead and use the default. If on the other hand, you have already used up your default instance, you would have to uninstall the earlier version to get this default option. Or just give it a name. Named option would be something like, I don't know, SQL 2016. But for most of my classes, if you can do it, just use the default instance. Okay, so you can see that I have these other installations already on here. I wouldn't expect uh, many of my students to have those already, but if you do, don't worry about it. This will be standing along side by side. And leaving these are appropriate nowadays. They do just a fine job. Hmm. Interesting. I think I'll leave that, that new feature off until I know more about it. Uh, collation, nothing I really need to, to do here unless I'm in a foreign country and I need something other than the the general Latin one configuration. Everything's set up to automatically start. Uh, reporting server, so it can be pretty chatty in the background. I think I'll set that to manual. It um, it has a pretty good heartbeat. It keeps going and going and going, running in the background. So I'm going to turn that off. Uh, not off, but to manual. I can always turn it on as needed. Uh, but these other services I use on a pretty regular basis. So I'm going to go ahead and leave them as they are. And uh, this is always a very important one. Always click on the add current user to add yourself as a administrator. Uh, very, very important. The data directory should default to my D drive. Now that I've changed it, tempdb should uh, also default to my D drive. Again, if you have a, a different space or place where you want to put those, now's the time to configure it. Hitting next, if you chose to uh, include analysis server, you'll need to repeat the process of clicking add the current user. Again, not doing so can be fixed later on, but it's a real pain. So always click on that button for both the database and analysis server. Common mistake not to. Okay, and then that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and install and configure. Uh, reporting services and uh, that um, it usually needs to be kind of adjusted later on. Well, actually, to tell you the truth, this is a new version, so maybe it'll be just fine. Unless I have SharePoint installed, I do not want to use integration mode, and as you can see, it's it's grayed out. So install and configure is just fine. I can always come back and and change it later. And I think that's it. Ready to install. So next thing I'm going to do is hit the install button and pause the video so it will take its sweet time. I'll see you back in a bit. Okay, not bad. Uh, it took a little over eight minutes to get to this point. So one or more files affected by the uh, operation is pending, you must restart your computer. I strongly recommend you do that before you go any further. Um, that is uh, that's a, a really good warning. So, okay, at that point, I'm going to finish up, and well, then you can close. Now, at that uh, at that moment, SQL Server Manager Studio and everything else should be installed here. So we go down to the S's. Actually, let me go into the M's. I think it's under. I'm going to look for SQL Server 2016. I'm going to expand it, and I'm going to uh, to look down here. And I'm going to see that 
there is no SQL Server Management Studio, which seems kind of odd because always before when you installed SQL, that would be an option. Now it's a little different. What I need to do is I need to restart the installation. And this time choose to install the SQL Server Management Tools. Now that seems pretty dang odd to me, um, especially since <laughs> since the 90s. Uh, that was a very different experience. Uh, not a big deal though. We'll go ahead and uh, click on that. And you'll see that um, I get a new web page here, in which case. I need to go through and download the Magic Studio for general release. Okay, so the download's done. It took a couple minutes. I'm going to go ahead and open up the folder again. And uh, go ahead and run as administrator. Click the install, and oh, I think I'll pause it while it does this thing. Okay, well that took uh, almost four minutes to get accomplished. Uh, it may take a little longer on some machines. This is a very quick machine, and it's got um, good bandwidth going on. So, but uh, that looks like that part's finished. Okay, let's go uh, see what we just installed. So, Microsoft Management Studio. Now that should be under 2016, it is. And we can run it, SQL Server 2016. Now because I've uh, installed it as a default instance, I can use the word localhost to test it. Or just a single period will work also. Again, if you installed it with a named instance, whatever your named instance is, whatever you called it, you'll have to, to do that to test it. <clears throat> but that seems to be the case. It seems to be working. And uh, I can make a new query window. Select all from the view sys databases, and it tells me which databases are installed. It also tells me that the query is running. Everything actually looks pretty good. So it uh, doesn't look much different than the previous version, so a couple icon upgrades, etc. Um, but I know it's working now, and that's, that's all I really want to know at this point. So the next thing I need to do is I need to come back over to the installation program again. Twenty sixteen installation center. This time I want to choose uh, installation, the SQL Server data tools. So just like before, I need to go ahead and click on that link, and then come over and download it. <clears throat> now you'll see that it says SQL Server data tools for Visual Studio 2015, and that's set up for uh, 2016. Now I have not installed Visual Studio 2015 on this machine. Uh, that's on, on purpose so I could actually do this video all here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on that link, do the download again, and once again I'll kind of pause it while it does its, its download. That actually looked like it went faster. And yes, I want to be able to 
uh, work with analysis server, reporting server, and integration server, those tools. But it looks like they've combined them into one install. And now we can uh, just uncheck what we don't want, but we want it all. And now I'll pause. Okay, that also took, oh, I don't know, about, uh, about five minutes or so. So ready to uh, move on. Go ahead and see. Uh, okay, at that point. Let's see, I don't need these in my way at the moment. Go down here to the start button and type in SQL Server Data Tools for 2013. Well, let's try it again. How about 16? Yep, 15. Now it's going to throw me off a bit. It doesn't really matter what you choose, but I'm going to go ahead and choose Business Intelligence Settings. And I think I'll choose the dark option just for different to be different. Now this usually goes pretty fast, uh, but once again I'll pause the video and let it do its thing. Well, that took less than 30 seconds to configure, so that's we're in good shape there. And now it's it's installed, all dark and mysterious here. Let's, uh, let's see what we have in project, and you can see that I have the business intelligence uh, tools, the templates, etc., all set up here. Um, I don't have anything for C Sharp or VB or web apps or anything like that because this only installed Visual Studio, which is a shell, and the business intelligence tools. So you'd have to download and install those uh, plugins for C Sharp if you want to develop. But um, also, Notice that I never actually installed Visual Studio, so you didn't need to do that to get this this installed. Uh, and at this point, I'm ready to go through and create um, all the business intelligence stuff I need, including analysis server, integration server, reporting server. I can use Management Studio to manage the database. Uh, I can also now uh, work with various different data tools here. So connect to SQL Server. Uh, new query, data comparison. These are part of the SQL Server data tools um, that would get installed in a separate installation um, previously. But as you can see, oops, period there. I can actually do that now as well. So that's kind of cool. Select all from databases, same query as we had before. I'll hold down the control button and zoom in so you can see the code. I'm going to right click and execute the code. It works. So yeah, it's installed and ready to go. Uh, next thing for me to do would be to reboot my machine. Now um, I'm going to go ahead and, and post this video. Uh, it's a little bit raw with a, a few uh, uh, things happening kind of organically, let's call it that. <laughs> But I think it'll still be handy for people getting started, uh, give them kind of a feel for what the installation is going to be like and how long it's going to take. Uh, total time to get this installed was roughly hmm, about 50 minutes, I think. And that was, you know, getting everything installed. And I'm not even sure it was that quite that long. But um, hopefully that, that uh, helps people and uh, go forth and have fun. Take care.